Hey, this is an Adriana guide. Today we're going to talk about skills and combos, her build route, the route progression, and her endgame items. First we're going to start off with Adriana's basic combo, which is her WQ combo. This is going to be your bread and butter damage move for killing monsters around the map, along with being your best way to deal damage to players. Using this combo is pretty straightforward, uh, but don't be afraid to mix it up by doing it diagonally, horizontally, whatever direction you need to to make sure the enemy stays inside of it. One thing to note about this combo is if you execute it poorly, you can be stuck in your Q animation while the enemy is avoiding all of the damage from it. Uh, in that case, you'll want to hit Q, or in my case, mash Q, to stop yourself from queuing nothing, as hitting Q again will cancel the ongoing Q. Next up, we're going to cover using Adriana's E. This is one of the best movement abilities in the game for a couple of reasons. The biggest two being that it can go through walls, and it is quite long. Because of how long it is, you can go through more walls than a lot of other skills can. Because of this, when you need to get away from somebody, walls are your best friend. Another part of what makes this skill so good is that it has applications for offense and defense. When you're running away from an enemy, you can use a W and then E over it, igniting it, making it much harder for the enemy to chase you. You can also use this ability offensively. You can cast W on a running enemy and then E over that W to ignite it, while closing the gap between you and the enemy. Next, we're going to talk about effectively using Adriana's ultimate. Adriana's R is great as a standalone ability, but it really shines when you combine it with her W. Since her ultimate automatically starts ignited, throwing a W on top of it will also ignite the W. This is Adriana's most important tool for keeping enemies in her Q. It's good to note that both her R and W can be used while you are queuing, and it will not interrupt her Q. The lion's share of Adriana's damage comes from keeping enemies in ignited oil, so using your R and W effectively is very important. So when you're learning the character, don't be afraid to get creative with it. Putting it all together is a lot easier said than done. Make sure you're using your R to keep melees off of you, combining it with your W to ignite your oil, and overall architecting a flaming oil field that makes it as hard for your enemy as possible. Next up, we're going to look at what I think is one of Adriana's best build routes. The route itself will take you starting an avenue to archery range, school, hospital, beach, and then forest. I've made some helpful infographics for each zone, and I'll cover what each of those sections means. First up, we have the required section. If you do not have the items in the required section by the time you leave this zone, you are going to have a bad time. In the zone one example, we can see that you need two batteries and a glass bottle before leaving. The items in the optional section are nice to have, but they appear in subsequent zones, so you do not necessarily need to have them by the time you leave the first zone. The food section shows you what items you can grab here that you could make into food later. And lastly, the extras section will show you items that you can create here in this zone or grab in this zone to eventually build into your endgame items using Trees of Life or IVF blood bags or what have you. In zone 1 here, if we build an extra pair of repaired slippers, if the Hotel Tree of Life is up, we can turn them into glacial shoes. With the infographic explanation out of the way, we're going to hop into a game. In this particular game, we spent a lot of time in Zone 1 because we got pretty unlucky with batteries and glass bottles. So we had to do some extra scouting around the zone in order to get all the items before we could leave. In Zone 2, uh, the important things to cover here are we can make chocolate chip cookies if we found any milk and chocolate in Avenue by picking up the abundant sticks in Archery. Uh, we can pick up extra chocolate uh, to make chocolate chip cookies later as we run across sticks. Uh, we can make Heelys here with sneakers and iron balls uh, to get movement speed mastery if we find extras. This can also help deny other players uh, who might need those items. So this is usually a good idea to do if you, ha if you fi run across them. If we happen to find a second monk robe, we can carry that along with us to eventually build it into a Queen of Hearts later. The nail, of course, uh, is used for a Scotty, or uh, it can be turned into traps if we happen across any four scores. Once you finish your weapon in this zone, you are extremely strong. Uh, strong enough to bully almost every character you come across except another Adriana. Uh, with that in mind, make sure you attempt to bully and kill anybody you see at this point. Zone 3 has a couple of things to talk about, uh, the most important of which is lighters. You can use one lighter here to create uh, straight jacket sneakers which are the shoes you're going to use if you don't go for glacial shoes in Hotel. If you're a newer player, I would suggest going for straight jacket sneakers instead of fighting for the Tree of Life, 
as you get a hang of how everything in this route kind of comes together and works. If you're a more experienced player, however, this lighter becomes optional, as you're more confident in your ability to contest trees of life and eventually get them consistently. The only other notable things in this area are extra lighters. If you happen across them, you could use them to make food later when you're in forest. And along with that, you will need at least one upgraded monk robe for your EOD suit. If you found an extra monk robe in archery range, you can upgrade that to the upgraded monk robe. You will need that later to build a queen of hearts. In this particular game, I opted to skip the lighter um, and just go to Hotel. Uh, the Tree of Life was already taken when I got there, but that's not that big of a deal because we can just get a Tree of Life later. In a perfect world, we'd find a lighter so that we can go into Hotel having the straitjacket sneakers already built. We have our backup pair of shoes that we can then turn into the Glacial Shoes. That way we're as strong as we can possibly be when we fight over the Tree of Life. Zone 4 is pretty simple as far as items go, but getting here quick enough to contest the Tree of Life is the hard part. If we manage to successfully get the Tree of Life, we just need some ice and some rocks to make glacial ice, which we can then turn into glacial shoes. If we have good luck in our first couple of zones, we should be pretty powerful at this point in the game. Because of that, most characters will be pretty easy to bully off of this Tree of Life. The one thing to be cautious about is if you run out of our stacks driving the first person away, you'll be at a pretty big disadvantage fighting the second person. We finish the rest of our big items in this zone and start looking for food at this point. If we have any remaining milk and chocolate, we'd probably want to build those into cookies at this point. We want to scrounge for cameras if we're able to find any using the um, binoculars and telephoto cameras. And the last little tip is if we happen to have hammers, scrap metal, and gems at the same time, it will prioritize the ruby over the sheet metal. We'll want to make sure to click the sheet metal, that way we can finish our EOD suit as well as our sheath. If we happen to mistakenly craft the ruby first, we'll just have to hold on to it until we get our sheet metal. Then we can build our sheath, and then we can use the ruby. The late game extra here is a mouse trap combined with a nail to make spiked planks. We can turn these spiked planks into either a crimson bracelet and a scotty, if we manage to get an extra tree of life, or we can turn them into remote mines, if we get a four score. Zone 6 is again pretty straightforward item wise. Usually you're only going to be looking for a feather here. It's not the end of the world if you don't manage to find the feather, but it is a nice little damage boost if you do. As far as food goes, you may already have some chocolate chip cookies from your first two zones. If you have some extra lighters from school, making baked carp with heated stones is a good mid-tier food that you can use towards the end of the game. If you're worried about not having enough food, instead of making baked carp, you can make fish stew. Uh, you use boiling water on the baked carp instead of heated stones, and that should give you about 33% more food. If you struck out in your first two zones and you didn't get any layers in school, your next best bet for getting food is going to be trying to make health potions. You can do that with the root and flower in forest to make orchids. Uh, after you get four to six orchids, you can then head to chapel or avenue to find some glass bottles, which you can then turn into healing pots. If you've had the upgraded monk robe this whole time, you can use a flower on it to upgrade it to a handbok, and then it is at the point where it is ready for a IVF blood bag to turn it into a queen of hearts. Ideally, we get our food sorted here before Wick spawns. We show up at Wick, kill her, get the blood bag, and boom, we have our queen of hearts. Alright, now that the core of the build guide is done, we're going to talk about finishing your extras. So all those random items we've been picking up along the way, here's where it all comes together. So the glacial shoes have been covered pretty well um, in the sections of the guide that apply because this is the item that if you're doing well, you'll probably get almost every game. Uh, so we're not going to cover it too much here, but just know that if you're doing well in a game, you're probably going to be strong enough to get that first tree of life in hotel and from there grab the glacial shoes. If you are ahead and you did get your glacial shoes, there's a good chance you can get the second tree of life in forest. Uh, and with that, get yourself a bracelet of Scotty, which is an extremely good item on Adriana. Uh, to get that item, you will need the mousetrap nail to make the spiked planks, and you'll need to stop by Uptown to quickly get a bracelet, and then head over to Forest to try and get the Tree of Life. From there, you should have an extra ice from Hotel that you can turn, use to make that Tree of Life from Forest into a glacial ice, which you can then combine with the Crimson Bracelet to make the Scotty. And last but not least is the Queen of Hearts, which is by far the best item on Adriana to get. So you want to try to prioritize getting the Queen of Hearts every time if you can. Uh, she has a pretty good time killing Wick, especially if you use E to keep her on top of your W. That can be quite risky though if you expect people to contest you at Wick line. Not really covered here, uh, but shown in the best in slot endgame section is the Mithril Helmet. Uh, the Mithril Helmet you can get with a hat and chain uh, and then a piece of Mithril. 
Uh, this unfortunately is not very easy to assemble along the current route, so that's kind of a, if you find mithril, that's an extracurricular activity you'll have to handle on your own. The other most notable mithril item is if you're unable to get a Scotty, building a mithril shield is very doable in beach because all it requires is a turtle shell and a piece of leather. So if you find mithril at beach, turning it into a mithril shield is quite good. One of the hardest parts of routing in this game is making up for times when you go dry, knowing how to pivot to make up for missing items or getting delayed in your route or what, what have you. Uh, this game that's been showcased during the clip sections showcasing the route was actually one of the the single worst luck streaks you could have in any any given zone. In Avenue, we missed our two core items with the two batteries and glass. We had to look extra hard to get both of those. When we got to Archery, it took extra long to get all our items there. When we got to School, we missed out on every single bandage, and we did not have any lighters going into Hotel. We got to Hotel extremely late to the point where we couldn't even fight for the Tree of Life. Um... And that's not the build's fault, that's just what happens sometimes when you get bad RNG. So to make up for some of that RNG, we have to know what we're supposed to do in that situation. In this particular game, since we needed two bandages, uh, we decided to take the teleporter to factory, hoping that we'd find some lighters and some bandages. Bulls farming mastery and getting extra food. Uh, we did manage to kill Wick because uh, it's North America and nobody kills Wick. Um, so we headed to the final zone, which is Hotel, and started to scrap with Wick Buff. Uh, Wick Buff on Adriana is extraordinarily potent, uh, because each tick of her fire will reapply uh, Wick Buff, so um, it, it's a, a very potent damage combo. Since we had so much food at this point in the game, we weren't really in a rush to kind of all in anybody to kill them. Uh, we just wanted to let Wick Buff... Uh, deal a bunch of damage to their health bars and kind of play it slow until food was starting to become an issue. Or if somebody made an obvious mistake where it was easy to capitalize on without risk to ourself. Towards the end of the game, one powerful tool you have is the bush check with your uh, W. Uh, once you ignite the oil, it gives you vision along the whole path there, so you can use that to clear out bushes without having to waste forwards or anything of the sort. Against melee characters, the most powerful tool you have is your R. Uh, placing it correctly to knock them off you just barely so that they're out of range is a great tool you can use to keep them in range running into your queue so that they keep taking damage. Uh, with that, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I'll be posting a second video that has all of the infographics with a rough timer for how long it should take to get through each zone. That way you can pull up that video when you're learning the route and kind of see uh, the things you need to get as you go. I'll link it in the comments or description.